We all have 9-11 stories. Entrepreneur Mike Bloomberg that day, he was at a New York City polling place voting for himself in the Republican primary for mayor. He was elected less than two months later, tasked with rebuilding New York City, specifically downtown Manhattan, and of course, the city's economy and our morale. Earlier today, right below us at Ground Zero, I spoke exclusively to the former mayor. He was also my former boss at Bloomberg TV and the current chairman of the 9-11 Memorial and Museum. In our interview, he talked about his memories on that fateful day. He lost friends. He lost employees. It changed his future. But he talked a lot about how we as a city and as a nation can achieve unity today. Mayor, thank you for speaking to me on this very sad morning. It is a sad morning, but it's also a morning to hope for the best. We've made a lot of progress in 20 years coming back. And in memory of those that we lost, we've got to look to the future. They left young kids and spouses and friends. And I think that's what you and I should think about. A family member, you have to remember those you lost. But for the rest of us, it's the future. We all have a 9-11 story, but for you, you were voting that morning. It was your first foray into New York politics. You were actually on the ballot in the New York City mayoral primary. Vote. What was going through your mind? You didn't have a background in terror, and you are now looking to run a city that was completely different. Voted on 62nd Street, walked down with a reporter who was talking to me about how great the weather was and how turnout would be because better because there's no clouds in the sky and got to campaign headquarters and then somebody said on the television a plane went in and then no, nobody thought about terrorism but 20 minutes later when the second plane went in it was obviously not an accident uh, and then we started thinking about that and uh, I... Did you doubt if you could do the job? I didn't doubt that I could do the job. Remember after 9-11 all those people who said New York is dead, commuters won't come back, tourists okay. won't come back, they did. Well, a little bit we're of hearing it. those same things now as we're coming out of COVID. Stephanie, How does New York bounce back? It, it, it is bouncing back. If you talk to a real estate agent, they'll tell you anything for sale is selling the day that it goes on the market, okay? Take a look at the streets, streets that have people living uh, along them. The stores are coming back much more rapidly than streets where it's only offices, because not everybody's back in the offices. But I can just look in my company. Every day, there's more people back. And that's true when I talk to other people. More stores are reopening. The subways now have traffic. What we've got to do is get the next mayor, and I, I assume the Democrat is going to win. I think he probably is the right guy. I supported him, and I voted uh, for him. A lot of his policies I don't probably agree with. But he will focus on things like you got to stop the murders and the crime. you got to stop the homeless on the streets who have no help. Not only do they have no hope for themselves, they're the ones that take away our ability to help everybody because they get in the way of... You've got to give people... Get, get them to look for the future. Well, then I have to ask you about the direction of our country because something I know you are very proud of is how New York stood united after 9-11. The country did. Yes. And today, right now, 20 years later, our head of Homeland Security says our biggest terror threat isn't from overseas, it's domestic terrorism. I heard people booing the president when he stepped off the podium. How do we come together when this is the country we're well, in right now, Mike? I, I think one of the things that's happened, everybody says, why is it different now? Social media is different because it's giving everybody a microphone. And in the past, not everybody had that. And so things were thought about a little more, and we didn't jump to as quickly as we do from one thing to another. But I think the terrorism that uh, came from overseas uh, still has the potential to do that. Nobody should think that everybody is now a nice person, and they're going to say, oh, I love America, and uh, they, we're going to work with them and give democracy to everybody and let but women have equal rights. what about our fellow Americans? Uh, our Americans, we are split in this country. We have not pulled people together. Um, can and we? That's what, yeah, sure you can. You have to have somebody who people respect and say, I don't agree with her or him, but stop this bull****. We've got to get and work together. And What's I, I going to make Joe, that happen? Well, Mike? I hope Joe Biden's a new president. He comes in with more experience than any new president in history, probably. He was in the White House for eight years, and he was in the Senate for 30-odd years. 
um, and hopefully he will pull them together. I'm never going to agree with all the things he does, and I'm, I, I will with some of them. But he's got the job, and I think it's it's time. He, he, We've got to somehow or other get both the left and the right to say, I can't get it all, I want to get something, and I'll let the other side have something and work together. Do you, do you actually see that happening? Well, if we don't do that, we're in real trouble. I think we will get through this. A lot of these things, remember, Stephanie, go in waves, and the press exacerbates it because they, they talk about the slightest little thing. If you look cross-eyed at somebody, all of a sudden, oh, the world's coming to an end. Uh, or Mike, nobody was other. looking cross-eyed on January 6th. There was an insurrection. Uh, in the it's, it's a disgrace what happened. Uh, there's no excuse for anybody that participated in that. The government should come down on them like a ton of bricks. And those who uh, refuse to cooperate it's, it, it should hang their heads in shame. But they are who they are, and we've got to go and work with them. And overseas, we've got to rebuild our relationships with our allies around the world. People keep saying, oh, I don't know that we need to have military overseas or foreign aid or those things. Those are the things that keep America safe. Mayor Bloomberg, thank you for your time this morning. You're welcome. That's a day. I, the bottom line is I think you should be optimistic for what's going to happen and understand that there's plenty of problems and we certainly haven't solved them all and um, you know, it's time to uh, pull together.